there's a new Matt Black in town. And welcome to the studio. Today we're having a little bit of a try and test with matte black paints. This is the acrylic black 3.0 by Stuart Semple, argued to be the blackest black available for artists to use. I've also got the brand new Golden Paints So Flat Matte Black, which is meant to be a very, very matte black. So this is quite exciting. The So Flat range has had a lot of hype and I'm excited to try it out. To get a bit of a comparison, I'm also using a very cheap old tube of black acrylic paint. I'm pretty sure this tube was about $2 and has been sitting in my drawer for quite a while. So this should give us a bottom range for acrylic black paint. I've also got a gouache in black, which of course gives a nice matte finish. So that should give us a nice comparison. Let's get going. Now to test these four out, we're going to have to have a little criteria and I'm going to be using some different papers as well. So I've got the paint on paper by Claire Fontaine in both textured and smooth. And our criteria is who is the mattest black? What texture is the paint? And does surface affect how matte it appears? So by using these two different papers, I think that'll give me a good comparison. One is just completely smooth, and then the other, as you can see, has this sort of dimpled, pressed texture in it. And I'm just going to paint straight on the paper. Now, unfortunately, when I sat down to do this test, I had a bit too much gusto, and I forgot the golden rule of acrylics. You need to shake them up before you use them. <laughs> My 3.0 black had separated a little bit and was a bit watery, so I just had to quickly mop that off with a bit of paper towel, learn my lesson, shake the paint, and then put it in a palette before I use it. So this is what I get. I'm an oil painter. I don't use acrylics all that often, except for backgrounds, and that's where I'm intrigued to use this one. Black 3.0 just went nice and smooth onto the paper. I've done three different trials. I've done a smooth, heavy section, I've done a 3D blob, and I've done a thin, scumbled out section. The So Flat paint by Golden comes in this nice little pot, which I do agree I like. I just hate those little paper seals they put on them because I always get paint all over my hands, but oh well. Um, this one glided on the paper. It was really nice texture to apply. I did find when I did the blob that it tend to flatten out a bit so I would call it a bit of a self-leveling paint and then again for the little scumble part it was just super easy to apply and does look quite black so at the moment they're looking very similar. All right the cheapy paint. Oh no. Oh no. This has probably been sitting in my drawer a bit too long. It's gone all chunky and textured. But I don't have any other cheapy acrylics, so we're just gonna use it anyway. I tried to pat it flat using the paintbrush. It sort of worked, but the blob is just all the weird chunks and the scumble, it didn't have the best opacity in the world, I'll be honest. So that's what you get for cheapy paints. It, it's okay, but it's not great. And then for the gouache, I did forget to add water originally, but once I did, it applied nice and smooth. Again, looking very similar at the moment. I'd say the cheapy paint is the only one standing out as being a bit different. The gouache thick blob will take a while to dry, but we'll get there. And then we have our four competitors. This is how they look when the paint is wet. As you can see, the golden so flat is drying really fast, which is nice. The others will take a little while. And here they are the next day. I do admit, the black 3.0 is a beautiful velvety matte black. It looks quite subtle here on camera, but I definitely say it is the mattest, blackest black. It is the darkest one. Even the blob barely looks 3D because of how black it looks here on camera. The So Flat performed really well, but it's definitely a little bit lighter. Um, the Hard Blob probably shows a little bit more the colour difference. The $2 shot paint 
it's definitely got a bit of gloss to it so it stands out in this group and as you can see the scumbled out section came out very light grey and the gouache performed pretty much just as well as the so flat golden so I would say the so flat is very comparable to gouache finish that there we were seeing the smooth paper here on the textured paper you can see the differences even more clearly so the black 3.0 you want a nice thick coat and it comes out beautifully here the two dollar shop paint shows up really glossy definitely not what we're looking for the so flat has gone right into the texture and it's actually made the texture seem a lot less visible as has the gouache so on a textured paper you're looking for these really nice matte paints to give you that flat section So black 3.0, you win this round. I'm gonna do a quick painting using it. Here's a nice satisfying time-lapse of watching the paint dry. I did two layers of black 3.0 in the middle of this sheet of the paint on paper in black, which is crazy because it doesn't even look like a black sheet of paper anymore after I've done that black 3.0 spot. It feels really nice and velvety when it's dry as well. And I'm gonna be doing a little painting where I wanna leave a section black so I want to do an animal that has a black body and a cute little face and yeah see how that black void looks being left as a negative space hole that you can see it's a little red panda oh he's such a cutie this was one of the community challenges over on the Proco website actually so I decided to enter that little one just for fun and I have a friend who super loves red pandas so I was very very excited to paint this it was really cute. Let's see him come together. For this painting, I'm using oil paints over the top of the acrylic. So the oil paints, the opacity changes depending what paint you use and in a lot of cases here I'm putting down a dark colour first and then going over the top of it with a light to pull out the values and I'm just gradually working my way around figuring out what colours I want to use. I didn't want to leave it sort of very clean edged, I wanted it to have that sort of fuzz out effect in the background and that was the idea with having the section in the middle of the paper be a bit rough. And as you can see even already that black body is just so dark and so lustrous. I almost wish I left more sections black around the face with the background colour, but similar to painting with watercolour, you have to be so careful to make sure to leave those areas you want with the background colour right at the start, because the second you paint into them, the oil paints do have a bit of gloss to them, so they ruin that matte effect. our little red panda. Isn't he cute? His body is such a void. I definitely want to experiment more with doing this sort of oil painting onto a matte finish. So even though the golden so flat didn't win out this battle, in terms of using their other colours that aren't black, they might be really good options for me to have that matte acrylic background to start on. I'm really happy with how this little guy turned out. Thank you so much for watching. And make sure to catch the live streams. I've been live streaming every week. You can check out my schedule in the about page. And I'd love to see you in a live stream where we do little painting projects like this. Thanks so much for watching. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to wash your brushes. Bye.